Well, uh, thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Christoph Schreimer, and I'm currently working at the No Center in Graz, which is Austria's uh, leading research center for big data analytics and data-driven business. And today I'm going to present our paper, Generating Simple Directed Social Network Graphs for Information Spreading. Um, at first, I'll give a short introduction by giving a little bit about the motivation and the background for the paper, then go into the method and the content of the paper, show some of the results that we obtained, and give a short summary in the end. Um, first of all, this paper um, has been written within the Hidalgo project, which was a European Union funded project going from December 2018 until February 2022, where we have applied various big data technologies and HPC for global systems. We were in total 13 partner institutions and worked on four global challenges with the uh, assistance of big data analytics and artificial intelligence. And one of these four global challenges was the so-called social networks use case, where the idea was to simulate how messages spread in social networks, for instance, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, but ultimately, we then also put our focus uh, on Twitter. We have uh, gathered some data from Twitter um, by crawling 14 different follower subgraphs with sizes ranging from 500 to approximately 50,000 users. And to analyze these graphs, we have looked at various topological features, for instance, the density, the largest video connected components, the diameter, but also the average clustering coefficient, which is one of the most important measures for uh, the analysis of social networks. We have also looked at various algorithmic properties, uh, for instance, the SRR model, but I will come to that uh, in the results section. After we uh, gathered the data, we kind of saw that um, the crawling of these graphs is a very tedious and time consuming process, which can take uh, up a couple of weeks, especially for the bigger graphs, even if we split it up um, uh, over a couple of people who help with the crawling. And also, <clears throat> The user data of these graphs is obviously very sensitive since uh, the users can give their names uh, and various personal information, for example, um, their political affiliation, maybe their religious affiliation and where they live. So um, the data has to be treated very carefully and cannot be shared with others. And also after we uh, gathered the data, um, we only basically have a snapshot of the graphs. And the graphs are always evolving with new follower, follower relationships evolving. And um, therefore, we saw the need to uh, create these social network graphs ourselves, such that we can uh, simulate how um, messages spread on them. Um, and next, I want to go uh, more into, I want to go into the method. And for that, first of all, uh, the definition of a graph is just, it is a tuple consisting of a set of nodes and a set of edges. And these edges can um, obviously either be directed, which means in the context of Twitter, that one user follows one other user, and then the information can uh, flow from one, only from, from the one user to another user. Um, edges can also be uh, undirected, or we would also call them reciprocal, which in Twitter would mean that uh, two users follow each other, and then the information can uh, spread from both uh, from can spread between both users in both directions. And here, just a very short example of a graph with five nodes, um, four directed edges, and two reciprocal edges where when we look at the graph, we see uh, that the reciprocal degree for the node D in this case is uh, one, since it has one reciprocal edge to another node. It has an in degree of two, uh, since it has two incoming edges, and it has an out degree of zero, since it has no outgoing edge. Um, generating graphs has been a topic that has been in the literature since the late 50s uh, and big to beginning of 60s when it started off. And for us, we drew the most inspiration from the Zhang Lu model. And in the Zhang Lu model, and the basic idea is that uh, no nodes are connecting to each other uh, proportional to their sampled node degrees. 
and in the uh, basic uh, the basic the baseline model um, usually only looks at reciprocal edges or at direct edges but there's also a paper that looks at a mixture of reciprocal and direct edges where we drew a lot of inspiration from to uh, create our method the basic idea of our method is that, um, as mentioned before, we have crawled these Twitter follower subgraphs and we want to extract some information from these graphs and try to replicate them as closely as possible with respect to the topological features where we have put our most emphasis on uh, achieving graphs that have a, same, have a very similar size and a compar comparable average clustering coefficient in the largest weakly connected component. Um, next, I want to go a little bit more into the details of uh, the graph generation approach. We have split it up into uh, four different steps. In the first step, we are fitting distributions uh, to the node degrees of the cohort graphs. And here we are looking at the reciprocal degree, the in degree, and the out degree uh, separately. In the second step, we are uh, sampling correlated node degrees from these fitted distributions. and then uh, we are applying a version of the chang -Lu model where we then um, do a probabilistic sampling of the edges proportional to their degrees by looking at the reciprocal edges and the directed edges uh, separately one after another. And in the end, to um, achieve a higher clustering coefficient, we apply an edge rewiring procedure. So in the first step, we are fitting the degree distributions. And in the literature, it is often said that in social network graphs, the degrees follow either a power law or a log normal distribution. But we found that for our uh, Twitter follower subgraphs, a chi-square distribution is actually a better fit with uh, different hyperparameters. And this is uh, for, all, for the three different degrees, the reciprocal degree, the in degree, and the out degree which we can also see in the figure here on the right hand side where the orange bars represent the crawl uh, the crawl degrees uh, here especially the reciprocal degree of one of the graphs and the blue bins uh, they represent the sampled chi square degrees where we see that we have quite a nice overlap and uh, we have also sampled power law degrees of a fitted distribution where we see that they um, overfit uh, especially the high degrees uh, which led to a higher mean uh, reciprocal degree. So now that we have uh, fitted these degree distributions, we are going to the second step, uh, where at first we are also extracting the rank relations from the crawled graphs between the degrees and map it into the linear correlation coefficients. With, this lin with these linear correlation coefficients, we then uh, sample uh, correlated multivariate Gaussian data. And in a couple of steps, we transform the data into the node degree, into node degree sequences for, uh, for, each, uh, for the nodes, which leads us to the sequences uh, for the reciprocal degree, the in degree, and the out degree for each nodes. Uh, here are I and O. In the next step, we want to connect the nodes. Um, uh, we, we want to connect the nodes with edges. And here, for the creation of uh, simple directed social network graphs, we want to avoid two, situa two situations. The first one being that we are sampling uh, self loops, which is depicted here for the node A, which means that a node is connected to itself. So the situation doesn't really make sense uh, for social network graphs. And we also want to avoid the second situation here, uh, depicted uh, with the two nodes B and C that we have parallel edges, which means that we have basically two channels between uh, two nodes. Uh, here, if, uh, as mentioned before for Twitter, a reciprocal edge is what we are treating as two directed edges. And that would mean that we would have one directed edge from B to C and two directed edges uh, from the node C to B. And we want to avoid these situations. So um, at first we are sampling reciprocal degrees and for that, we are at first computing the expected reciprocal degree sum and then um, basically sample the edges uh, proportional to their uh, node degrees. 
after sampling reciprocal edges, we have a, a, an undirected graph. And in the next step, we are sampling the directed edges. So now to avoid these situations on the right-hand side between the two nodes B and C, uh, we first at first always need to make sure that we do not sample an edge that has already been sampled as a, as a reciprocal edge. But um, for all the others, we are applying uh, basically the same idea, the Chang Lu model-like approach, where we at first uh, compute the expected number of directed edges and then sample directed edges uh, proportional to their node degrees. At this point, we already have, uh, we already have sampled a, a simple directed social network graph, but we have seen in the analysis, which I, I will also come to in a little bit, that the average clustering coefficient is way lower than in the crawled graphs. So to increase the clustering coefficient, we apply an edge rewiring procedure. And our idea is also that we want to preserve the node degrees of, uh, this, of the graph that we have already created. And for that, I just want to depict the idea at the hand of uh, a snapshot of an undirected graph. Um, we are all, always rewiring two edges at a time to preserve the node degree. Because if we, if we were to only uh, rewire one edge, for instance, uh, taking the edge between the two nodes B and D here on the left-hand side and rewiring this edge to be the edge BC, then uh, we would uh, alter the degree to the uh, sampled node degrees. So what we're doing is we're looking at one node at a time, two unconnected first degree neighbors, and then two unconnected second degree neighbors. And uh, we try to, or we uh, rewire the, uh, the edges that are vertical here in this, uh, in this figure for basically the horizontal edges. And this then increases the clustering coefficient of the node A. And this procedure is um, repeated for a selected number of nodes. This concludes the graph generation method. And at next, I want to go into some of the results that we obtained. Um, here in this table, we see the results for five different graphs, uh, ranging from the smallest graph with 500, approximately 500 nodes to the biggest graph with approximately 50,000 nodes. And in the uh, row for the density, in the first line, we see the density of the crawled graph. And in the second line, we see the density of the created graph. And what we observe here is that uh, the sizes of the graphs are replicated very well uh, since the density only starts to differ in the fourth decimal place. Um, when we are looking at the average clustering coefficient in this graph, also for the five, uh, for the five graphs, um, we see as the blue bins, the average clustering coefficient for the crawled graphs, the uh, result for the created graphs as an orange bin, and uh, without applying the fourth step, the edge rewiring, uh, the result as the green bin. And we see here that we have quite a nice overlap between the created and crawled graphs, and the clustering coefficients uh, are, all, are basically in the same range. Whereas when we are not applying the edge rewiring procedure, the clustering coefficient is uh, way lower, which is an indicator that uh, we need to apply the, the edge rewiring. Uh, Chris, just to warn you, you you're uh, uh, out of time. Uh, so please find a, a way to, to finish up when you have a moment. Okay, yeah. Um, just very briefly, we also applied an SIR model where we see here um, that uh, we have a nice overlap. And to uh, finish up, a uh, short summary, uh, we, uh, created, we developed a method to generate realistic social network graphs. And we saw some nodes have a degree of zero, and we have quite a high runtime for the large graphs. But um, overall, we are able to recreate the graphs, and also we have the possibility to create uh, graphs of arbitrary size. Thank you. I thank you, Chris. Um, just uh, uh, one question I have is: uh, you're you're creating these methods to re uh, replicate uh, social network uh, graphs, um, but uh, the question I have is, are you necessarily replicating the right graphs uh, in the sense that um, uh, 
are you using follower follow week graphs or retweet graphs or what, what sort of graphs are you trying to replicate? Um, here we are basically uh, trying to replicate follower follow e graphs. So the graphs that we have crawled um, are centered uh, around uh, a topic where we have, um, so for instance, uh, a political party, and we have looked at users who have tweeted about a political party at the hand of hashtags and uh, handles. And uh, we have given us a time window of, uh, I think, 40 days in most of the cases. And we have uh, then crawl, uh, extracted all the users that have, um, that have uh, tweeted about this topic and crawled all the followers and then pruned the graphs by all, such that we are only looking at the users and the follower relationships of the users that have uh, tweeted about uh, a certain topic. I see. Um, well, I mean, uh, so from my own experience uh, uh, from doing social network research, uh, these graphs are strongly uh, uh, constrained by things like uh, the recommendation system, uh, whereby um, the retweet graph might be more representative uh, because people are going to see probably only a small subset of that total graph uh, on a typical day. Um, so it could be some ideas for future work, but, but that this sounds very interesting. Yeah, um, thank you for, for the idea.